The philosopher Aristotle liked to read plays. His fellow Greeks wrote a lot of plays, and he liked to read them. And he noticed that some of them were funny, some of them were sad, quite sad, in fact, tragic. And it occurred to him to ask, "Hey, just what is a tragedy?" Now, if you're wondering why I'm talking about Aristotle and tragedies in what you thought was supposed to be a lesson about logical reasoning, it's because of what Aristotle did next to answer this question. It's precisely his approach that we're going to borrow. Okay, so what he did was he got his hands on as many plays as he could, and he just examined them. He just looked at as many tragedies as he could to see, hey, you know, I wonder if I can come up with a theory about what a tragedy is, right? Do I notice any similarities across different tragedies? And how I'm going to formulate my theory will be based on the observations that I make. In other words, the specific plays that I'm examining. Let's say I examine like five plays, and I notice something similar, right? And then I ask myself, hmm, maybe this is part of What it essentially means to be a tragedy, and I'm going to test my theory by applying it to a sixth play, to a seventh play, to see if it holds water. So it's this process of making observations, using the observations to formulate theories, and then testing your theories on more observations. This empirical process that we're going to borrow, because. Just as Aristotle is trying to understand what a tragedy is, we're trying to understand what an LR question is. So, what are we going to do? We're going to examine a ton of LR questions, and lucky for us, there are so many LR questions to examine. And having made a bunch of observations, a bunch of examinations, we're going to try to come up with theories. Now, the mark of a good theory, or there are really two marks of a good theory. One is that it's comprehensive, and the other is that it's predictive. Comprehensive means that Your theory should be able to explain as many observations as it possibly can, and predictive means that you might even be able to guess what the features of an unobserved LR question might be. Now, think about that for a second. If you had a theory of logical reasoning that was comprehensive, meaning you can explain every single logical reasoning question, not only that, was even predictive. You might be able to, with your theory, make predictions about what. Logical reasoning questions you haven't seen yet. What those questions contain? Then I think it's fair to say that you understand logical reasoning. So this will be our basic approach. One difference, though, is that you don't have to formulate a theory from scratch. I'm going to tell you my theory of logical reasoning, and it's going to be your job to first learn it and internalize it, and second to make it your own. You need to be able to take the theory, apply it to empirical observations of real logical reasoning questions, and see the ways in which the theory fits or doesn't fit. In other words, the way in which the theory of logical reasoning that you learn explains actual logical reasoning questions that you encounter in the wild. The claim is that the theory is going to be comprehensive and predictive, but ultimately, you're going to have to be the judge of that. Okay, so let's get started.